whole show this morning. So this morning, we're going to talk about setting the scene. This is all about how to be ready for viewings every day in Fife. Most people find this quite chaotic, but this is what it's all about. It's actually the preparation. Now, these are quick and handy tips to make sure you're ready all the time. And I love the 10 minute re ready reckoner at the end, which tells you exactly how to tidy up in 10 minutes. I mean, that's a revelation in itself, but the vlog's in here. So today's guests I've got on with me today, I've got Jimmy Mullen, estate agent. Morning, Jim. How are you? New background for me. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Anne-Marie. <laughs> Morning, Jim. <laughs> same background for me, always the same. <laughs> same background for me as well. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Okay, so let's talk about setting the scene and how to be ready for viewings in Fife itself. So, you know, we know this, guys. No matter how neat and tidy uh, you are, people always ask us how their home should look on viewings and whether they can improve on their actual presentation. I mean, well, no one expects you to live in a perfect show home. I mean, there is expectations, isn't there? Uh, yeah, and, you know, it's yeah, like it's amazing great. how many people go in to see and and they think, oh, I can't keep my house tidy all the time. It's like we're not expecting you to do that. You're given plenty of notice. You know that. I mean, I mean we are, aren't we, Anne Marie? We're given. Yeah, we're absolutely. Given plenty of, you know, so how much notice typically would you give somebody? Twenty four hours at least. Yeah. You know, if we've, you know, it'd be the next day. It would never be the same day. You know, um, <laughs> so they've got plenty of time really to yeah. prepare. And ideally, if a, if a viewer comes along and says, look, you know, I need, I need a wee bit more than 24 hours, we can easily accommodate that. I mean, at the end of the day, when you think about it, and I, I keep telling people, it's their house. It's them at selling. It's them that decides whether they want to accept an offer or whether they want to accept a viewer or when they want to accept offer and when they want to accept a viewer. But everybody's <laughs> conditioned into thinking, and I keep getting this all the time, it's like, what if I sell my house next week? I've not got anywhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a typical one, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that we but, have to keep reminding people they're in control. They're ultimately in control, but it's a mindset. And by the time you go through the legal process, it's going to be at least two or three months before you actually conclude. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get back to this. Let's talk about this. Well, no one expects you to live in the perfect show home. Buyers do react well to the pizzazz and a polish all the way around. They're looking ultimately to be seduced. And the way that you present your home can shorten the time it takes to agree a sale, which means less tidying up in the long run, really. You know, the quicker you say you get an offer, really, the quicker you'd like to go through the rigmarole of jumping through hoops every single time to actually get the house in a tidy state. Some people put themselves under extreme <laughs> pressure, don't they, Anne-Marie? Yeah, definitely. I mean, one lady actually said that to me once um, she agreed a sale on her property. She said, ah. Oh, Thank God I don't have to go through that every day now. You know, she had to every day make it because she had children as well, young children. So it was it was hard, it was hard for her. But every time we went to the house, you'd never even know that she had kids and you know. But yeah. she went through that every day and she was so relieved she didn't have to do that anymore. What's your experience of this, Jimmy? I think people, especially like myself, young family, people are gonna expect toys in the lounge or and there'll be a little bit of clutter but I think the key is to make sure it, it's clean and it, it's clean and tidy and it, and it smells fresh basically um, just so they get that good first impression when they work, walk through the door because everybody knows that you have to continue living your life and everyday life as such so as long as it's clean, tidy and fresh I think that's that's all that matters really yeah, I mean, yeah. viewers can happen any day, can't they? And the trick is to minimise disruption to your morning routine so you can get ready for work, prepare for the kids for school, uh, go for a daily run without adding a lengthy to-do list in the process. Then you can leave the house knowing that everything looks just right without feeling flustered or rushed, or at least no more than no more than usual at the end of the day. You know, whether I mean, it's a simple plan with some upfront preparation. It's fairly straightforward, <laughs> You're ready for viewings every day without feeling as though you're living in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> that's often how some people are, sterile yeah. and controlled environment. It's like, no, that's not what we're expecting. That's not what anybody else is expecting. 
Do you think, do, Jimmy, do you think people put unrealistic expectations on themselves? A hundred percent. People feel under, well, people obviously, they're going on the market, so they think the whole world's going to see my property. So I need to be looking, it needs to be looking like every, or like the adverts, should I say. <laughs> um, but it's all brand new and it's all <clears throat> pristine, but oh, gloss and, and, gloss and glamour oh, and everything like that, yeah, you know. Exactly. And and somebody's going to walk in; it's going to have to be a show home. Do you think? Do you think it's the rise of the um, location, 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 and uh, uh, can't sell, won't sell, things like you know, all these different programs? Do you think that puts a lot of pressure on people as viewers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think um, also that's. Uh, social media and stuff like now when they see these renovation houses on social media or yeah. um etc so they see all that and they think oh my house has got to look like that but really they should probably just have a look on some websites ourselves but you can see not all of our properties are immaculate but it's right for them and it's presented well so we get viewers through the door and people make offers yeah I mean, the reality is, to, 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 to tell the public and anybody watching, is we actually sell houses sometimes without people walking through the door at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you don't even need to. You don't even need to worry about having a viewer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll come back to this. I mean, a home that's full of love and full of life is a big selling point for buyers. Um, so this this show is all about finding a perfect balance between maintaining your happy home life and presenting a home that will actually sell in the process. So let's talk about the first one here. Before your home is for sale. Now, it's when you get energized with excitement of moving and putting your home on the market. So let's make the most of your enthusiasm. This is the first point. Everybody gets excited about the process. It's like, right, let's get a clean out. It's the same typical example about, you know, uh, well, classic example is I'm having a baby and the next minute it's like let's cl let's clear the whole house let's get the rooms prepared let's get everything done yeah. it's that initial excitement that you capture so when you're putting your house when you make that decision in your mind and you become focused on on that process that's when your enthusiasm jumps so that's when you should take advantage of it so when it comes to having your home photographed you can often get away with hiding things around the corner to get that perfect shot but to be but to prepare for viewings, you need a more permanent solution. I mean, you know, I've seen myself putting, you know, everything behind a sofa <laughs> when the photographs are getting taken and then bringing it all back out again and just leaving it there uh, where, I, where I found it. And, and then um, putting everything in cupboards in the kitchen off the worktops um, to get the photograph and then putting it all back on. But, but it, it actually comes down to, you know, when you're doing the viewing, it's a less, it's a, it is a more permanent solution, isn't it, Anne-Marie? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You can't just, um, it's just, it's just hard work to keep taking them back out again, put them, you know, it needs to be a permanent solution. If you know you're selling your property, maybe invest in some, you know, some or boxes or something, you know, put everything in there and keep them in there until you've sold, you know, even mm -hmm. if you have to live out of that box, try to keep, you know, clutter free, all the clutter that you need that you don't want to throw out or take to Oxfam, keep it, but just keep it away. You know, and just yeah. work out of that box every day. A nice, back. a nice plug for Oxfam. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and we'll happily give you some pointers on getting your rooms rooms looking right for the process. Then we suggest a weekend purge to deal with any visible or hidden clutter. Uh, make a household event, um, a Spotify playlist, pizza deliveries, coffee and juice for the kids on constant rotation. Whatever it makes, it, whatever makes it fun for you. That's you know you could turn this. What people see as a nightmare can be turned into you know a wonderful event. It's just how you it's how you reframe it and how you see it in your mind. It will determine how everybody else sees it round about you. I mean, with storage uh, space a priority for buyers, uh, then pay attention to your cupboards. I mean, if they're full to the brim, tackle them now rather than waiting until you pick uh, until you park. But you'll save time later, and your home won't feel like it's bursting at the seams. Uh, once you've chosen what to uh, uh, chosen what to sell, donate, store, and throw away. Now we've got good, uh, helpful guides on our YouTube channel 
it actually show you through that process, these individual points about how to declutter a home, how to get rid of the, all your junk that you think, that you're, how am I going to downsize, where's everything going to go? We've got all helpful guides on our YouTube channel for that. So if you just go into YouTube, type in Five Properties TV or Five Properties, you'll actually get our channel, look up the playlist for helpful guides, scroll through that, and you'll find a number of guides there which are specifically done for the purpose of the sales process as from the point of view as a buyer and the point of view as a seller um, to help you through that process. I mean, you can make a list uh, live on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or head down to the charity shop with any donation, donations, or even get uh, everything else bagged up and boxed um, before the caffeine wears off. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like now you've got yourself hyper it's before the caffeine wears off let's get something done i mean what's your top tips uh, Anne marie for this um my top tips really would be um the first thing to do is get rid of anything you you you, you don't want you know you're never going to use again you know you've all there's, there's family members that could maybe use you know use something that you have you know you could have it could be a stool um in your your your, your lounge it could be a, a table that it does, it, does it really need to still be there? You've had it for years and years and years. It could be sentimental. Get rid of it or, or give it to someone that, that could do with it, you know? Yeah. Make a list, you know, family members, um, charity shops, um, you know, eBay. There's so many platforms now where, you know, that you can actually um, give, give stuff away to, you know? You've got, everything's online now as well. Just make some money out of it even, you know? Yeah ebay uh, the car boot sales as well i mean so yes. we're, we're, now we're going into, uh, from level three to level two soon in the middle of may um, yeah. fingers crossed um, um hopefully um now we'll be able to do open open car boot sales and you know you can get rid of all the you can actually raise some money for just like you know either charities or or, or, or a fund you want to have for a holiday or something like that um, and yeah. some of your kids for you know you want to have for them for their first present or their their first uh, first event or anything like that. So there is opportunities to actually uh, make a wee bit of income. I mean, there's loads of shows on the television, isn't there? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You see the antique pro show and people don't yep. realise they, they think it's worth a fiver and all of a sudden it's worth a thousand pounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good this point. thing next year will be millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, still got too, too much stuff. Try spreading across. Try spreading everything across things like the loft, the cellar, um, the garage, um, the out, the, the shed outside. Obviously, if you're putting stuff out in the shed, realise that it will get a bit damp and moist and all the rest of it. But there are some things, you know, like children's toys and that, you can actually put in the shed as well. So you can actually spread all this stuff out and get it all decluttered into various areas. Um, so it's probably easier than you think. I'll tell you. Um, yeah. Sorry, I think you need to. What you need to do is get your essentials, what you need to live on, and maybe a few. If you got family, a few toys, their favourite ones, keep them out. If you think about it, if you hire, let's just say, just the way the market is going right now, fifty-one percent of properties are selling within the first two weeks. Mm. Conveyance in three three months process. So you got. To, let's just say you hired a storage unit for three months. How much is that going to cost you? A hundred pound, maybe. Let's just say. Yeah. You yeah. decluttering your home and getting it right. For that three months could be thousands yeah tens of thousands sometimes if it depends on where it I, is and what it and, is and the end result you know that's exactly that, that could so, make the difference between somebody actually saying no i don't want to buy it and i yes i do want to buy it and i'm actually prepared to pay a lot more money because yeah, now, I've, you know, for it. it looks like what i want to buy yeah i've seen a client um it was in lady bank actually when i first went first went through the door um they had a dog uh, a one-year-old and they were just expecting their second on the way when i was walking through i'm a bit lanky anyway but i was tiptoeing over all these toys they had a they had a, um, a footstool rammed in between the sofa so the dog in there and the young one couldn't get out and there was just toys everywhere but i said look you need to do this 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 and that and be ready and when i went through the door to get the photos and done and the videos and stuff it was a it was like a new home you wouldn't even know that they had a dog because it was all they had the senses you wouldn't even know they had a child because it was all packed away clean and tidy um and result they ended up set, set, going to closing date so yeah um, yeah all, all paid off them doing those little things to get it ready but let's say it was uh, a similar yeah. experience yeah Yep, absolutely. You know, I couldn't believe the, fun, the the huge difference within, and they'd done exactly the same thing. They'd taken the weekend out and they just actually done a purge on the weekend, got it sorted out, and it's sold. It's done and dusted. 
And that's the yeah. perfect thing about it. There's even the opportunity, if you've not got anything, ask your friends, your family, or anybody like that, if they've got an extra garage, they've got an extra shed, mm -hmm. and they're maybe not using it, you can store stuff in the now just for a temporary measure till you actually get your house sold, and then you've, you're on to the next one. And and then you just put, unpack it all again. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So the next one I want to talk about is cleaning and laundry. Just like death and taxes, laundry <laughs> is a fact of life. Yeah. But sheets hung over doors are never a good look. You got <laughs> you have to get that. Eh? I went I went to a property in Pitt and Wheaton the other day, and the downstairs neighbour had their washing out, and and I had to I had to I had to uh, I had to um, skillfully navigate the camera so you didn't actually see the washing. <laughs> So in a couple of cases, actually, it went down to me or it went down to the ground um, because it was just one of these unique situations where you thought, nah, you didn't you didn't want to see these things in a photo. And plus the fact of actually taking photographs of it, but they're actually getting sent to be photoshopped to take the washing out. Um, so, you know, it could easily just be done and on camera. So, again, it's something you don't need to worry about. Everything doesn't need to be sterile and, and you don't need to solve anything as a, as a seller. Um, that's our job to make sure that's easy and a smooth process for you to do that. Um, back to the laundry thing. Aim to get your laundry done when you're least likely to have viewings. Uh, that may be on a Saturday evening, so it's dry and folded and put away by the Sunday night, leaving you clear for the rest of the week. Um, that's if you've got viewers during the week. If you've got viewers during the weekend, then just flip it around to do your washing and your laundry during the week, and then do it like that. You know, if, if, do you have a cleaner? That's another thing. Tell us their schedule um, to help us uh, use our time uh, viewings accordingly. I mean, we have that with holiday homes. You know, when people have got uh, changeovers and viewers going in, viewing out, you know, I mean, that's what we're doing, isn't it, Anne-Marie? Yeah, definitely. We had a property um, in Pitt and Ream, actually. They had it as a holiday home. So um, we had to work around the, their schedule from when they had people staying there. But it wasn't just that. It was when they had to do the cleanup as well. You know, so, um, yeah, that was a that's a typical example. We had Remember, to work you've, you've, got a, you've got a two-hour window of opportunity for viewings. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Bust everybody in. Exactly, that's exactly what we did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bust everybody in, get the, get the job done, line everybody up. Right, you after the other. You've only got 10 minutes, that's it. Everybody's yeah. in. That's yeah. all we've got, and then you're out again. And yeah. uh, job, job done. Job yeah. done at the end of the day. That's, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, if you've got a cleaner, tell us a schedule to help them time and viewings accordingly. As a tip, we are often in the office on Monday mornings to follow up on the weekend viewings, gather feedback, and deal with offers. So this can be the perfect time for your cleaner to work their magic in the property before we actually go out to do the viewings. Um, with longer days, for example, and the approach of the summer, most viewings will happen when it's light. I mean, this is the great thing about the spring and the summer, Jimmy, isn't it? Is the fact oh, that you, yeah. can now, you can now do viewings on a daily basis rather than having to wait for everybody at weekend to weekend because you could never have enough light at night to do the viewing when everybody was after their work. Uh, I've never really, um, some people might be offended by this, but I've never really understand viewing a property in the dark. Um, yeah. uh, you can't feel, you can't get the feeling, you can't see the surroundings or who's by you, etc. But now, with the with the sun setting and the light light and night, it just gives Sunbridge people a wider opportunity to view, um, and gives you that that feel and summer feel as well. Especially now with lockdown, people are wanting gardens and extra rooms, etc. Yeah. So yeah. viewing now on the summer nights where they can see themselves doing barbecues, etc., uh, or hosting family events when we can again now. Um, this time of year is going to be um, a premium for seven. Yeah. I think that's what it comes. Uh, to. It's more of a it's more of a home, isn't it, Anne Marie? You know, yeah. it's it's you're you're viewing a home and a lifestyle. So viewing in the dark is probably not the best thing to do because you'll often be put off a house that you would otherwise during the day in the light you would actually think, wow, I could see myself living here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In the dark, it's just it's completely different, and the, the natural daylight is completely different to a light bulb. You know, I mean, you can you can see. The potential and you could see yourself in there to a certain degree but you can't beat natural sunlight in the daytime it's just you know you can't see the garden properly even if they've got floodlights it's just not the same i mean we still do them and we still sell properties in the dark you know but it's not really the you know the ideal really i can agree that's probably where video comes into play because video actually accentuates that and actually adds to that and for people that actually can't view um, unless it's out of hours uh, and in, in a situation like that, the video mm. is perfect. I mean, you know, 
natural brightness in your rooms will make it become clear immediately why you'd want to live there. Uh, the rays of sunshine and the highlight and how you, how you clear and clean your windows are. Uh, so make sure they're sparkling as well and see through either by you or by a pro. Um, and, you know, that's that's the reality as well. I mean, a lot of people don't realise in the light, um, the first thing you see on a window is all the dirt, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like my, yeah. Like my patio sure, doors. Everything. When you see Zara and Jack's handprints on the, all over the patio doors. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not an easy one when you've got children to constantly keep cleaning your house but you know if if the purge at the beginning to get on top of it um and then just regular routine day-to-day -day stuff just to keep it at that level um yeah. will more than adequately suffice this the the viewing situation but yeah. remember i mean with properties you know selling within almost the first viewer or maybe not even before it gets to the first viewer um mm -hmm. or two or three viewings in you know, and you really like to give yourself a huge burden for people um, when they actually want to view their house. So I, 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 it's it's maybe more people putting themselves under pressure again and coming back to saying that they actually have to think things will be sparkling all the time. Uh, one of the things that does put me off, though, when I do walk into a house, and I tell people to do this straight away, um, Lucas Glazing has obviously got a huge contract for this <laughs> because it's double, it's burst, it's burst double glazing. Uh, windows so the, the the seals are bursting the double glazing and it looks all you know you'll never get a clear window and sometimes it's part of the one it's a picture window and it'll make all the difference when people look at it um and i think to myself for the few hundred pounds you would take just to change that unit to a new unit um and have that glorious view out the front and the natural light coming in when you walk into this wow factor of a room um uh, that won't detract from the from the viewing any longer um, just for that few hundred pounds. So if you have burst units and double glazing, go look at look at actually getting them changed. Contact your glazer straight away. It's probably the first thing I would do because it's uh, glazers are hard to come by the now um, with all the building that's going on and 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 actually to book them in um, because of all the social distancing measures. So if you're actually considering selling, I would say the first point on your list would be to just check your windows and make sure they're all okay. If you do need them changed, just go and do it now. But even before you get an estate agent round, it, it, it'll, it'll reap rewards um, and it can detract from the viewing itself. Yeah. All, all, all for the sake of 100, 100 pound. Yeah, it, definitely. It could be the only thing somebody focuses on. Yeah, yeah, well it is. I was just gonna say that I've been on viewings and the house is really lovely. Everything's nice, ticks all their boxes, but that has actually been a deal breaker or that you know they have to have that conversation like so what's going on with the windows and then they see that and think oh my god i'm gonna to have to change all the windows in the whole house you, you know it, no. it, yeah yeah it definitely is something to to you know invest in you're just popping out the edges and then you just pop out the pane you put another one in put the packing slips in pop the uh, put the beading back in and then job's done it's as simple as that um same with a velux window you know typical velux window you can buy a kit off the internet from Velux themselves uh, for about a hundred pounds. Uh, you could actually take the window out and fit it yourself. That's how easy the kit is. Or you can just get a, a, a local tradesman to fit it, sling them 20, 30 quid, uh, job's done. Um, so you've changed your uh, pain on you. Because Velux windows are, are typically renowned for the double glazing blowing. I only know that because I've got them in my own house. Um, because the roof is obviously where all the constant heat comes from. Um, so it's usually over a period of time they actually go. And plus the fact that some people actually don't clean them. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> I'll put my hand up for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, tend to, you tend to forget about them. <laughs> you tend to forget about them and it's like, oh, no. And by the time you're about to clean them, it's like the, the, the moss and everything's ingrained. <laughs> <laughs> you can relate to that, Anne Marie, can't you? <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's something that you kind of forget about, or oh, I'll do it tomorrow, you know, and uh, then you've got a viewing all of a sudden, it's ah, you know, so yeah, I can relate. So, yeah, definitely, I mean, laundry, get it out of the way, get it done. Um, I tell you what, though, uh, what's quite nice is sometimes when you have that scent uh, and sensibility, and we're going to talk about that now, and, and how how the, the the best friend you've ever got is the adverts on the television for fabric softeners, and I'll tell you why. So we're going to come to setting the scene, sense and sensibility. From the beginning to the end, the scent of your home is the backdrop for every viewing. 
as the scent is the most connected to your memory, now this is where the key comes in about the adverts, smell does more than create an instant impression, it leaves a lasting reminder. What better excuse for some aromatherapy? This is when I come back to saying, lavender is probably the best thing you could ever do in a house because most of the, and vanilla is another one, because most of the fabric softeners are, are adverts um, immediately associate these smells with freshness. Works every single time. So if we've lived in, uh, when you think about it, if we've all lived in the pages of a magazine, freshly cut flowers, gently, gently roasted coffee beans, and baking bread would appear every day. Uh, infuse your home with fragrant greetings. Real life isn't necessarily like that, but that doesn't mean you're out of options, are we? You know, what, what, no. would, be, what would be your thoughts on that, Jimmy? I think you can have those ones um, that even those senses that you plug into the wall and it just sprays off every couple of hours. So you don't, you can plug it in the wall and you never even have to worry about it again. Mm. I walked into a home the other day, I'm not even sure what it was, but it was like this, this like water vapor smoke thing and it was just coming out. And I think it was yeah. um, lemon and I think it might've been lemon and lavender or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's the aromatherapies. Um, so the aromatherapies, you just put the oil into the, the wee boiler and the steam comes yeah. out with the oil in it. And it just puts an aromatherapy around the room. Um, yeah, was, that's a good one. Lovely. Yeah. What's What's your thoughts, Anne Marie? Um, yeah, I mean, you've got, um, there's even candles. I mean, candles sometimes can be hard work because they don't last as long as a plug-in or even yeah. those, um, I think it's a diffuser you might be talking about, Jimmy. They don't last as long, but they, I mean, I've, I had a, um, there was a property we had in Anstruther and um, one of the viewing feedbacks wasn't just the house, that every feedback mentioned the smell of the house as well. Beautiful. As you walked in, it was just, uh, you know, that was, that was, you know, one of the feedback that we got was uh, they loved the smell. And then they yeah. started talking about the house. So this is something that stays with people. The, the tell, couple had a blog as well. You would never know. I tell everybody every single time, home bargains and pound shop is your best friend. Because all you need to do is nip down, you get a pack of three or a pack of five, these gel air fresheners, you peel off the front, you, you stick it behind the door or you stick it behind a curtain or anything like that in the room, and it just infuses the whole room every single time. It yeah. is a well-known trick for estate agents to use. Well, for us to use anyway. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else and what they do, but it's a, it's a really good, it's a really cheap, effective thing. It's less than a pound to get these. You get two or three of them, two or three parks, you're three quid, and your whole house is, is smelling wonderful. You know, any sense you want. Um, but don't go for stuff that might put people off. Um, uh, like a scent. Yeah, a, a scent is quite jarring, or a scent it, it provides emotion. Um, you know, it's uh, your personal taste is fine, but stick with the tried and tested ones, the vanilla, the, the lavender, um, you know, all these ones that actually work very, very well. And um, one of the ones I would say is be careful for your pets about the infusers. If they've got, if they are in a wee, if they're in a wee jar or anything like that, and, and, it's, and it can be spilt, um, it can actually burn your pets. So um, be careful about that. Don't leave these lying about. Make sure if you've got pets, you've got a sealed uh, scent. Um, so it actually can't spill or anything like that, and just in case your pets are uh, are uh, hurt as a result of it. I mean, you know, first off as well, don't underestimate the power of nature. The simple act of leaving a couple of windows securely ajar will yeah. keep the inside air circulating and noticeably refreshed in the process. Now, obviously, if you've got loud noises outside, um, you would recommend just before the viewing closing the closing the windows um, so you don't hear that. But sometimes as well, it's a bonus because people say, oh, it's a busy road next door. And then it's like, well, OK, you may sound like it, but look what happens when I close the window. Total silence. Yeah. And then that's a big plus point as well because a lot of people actually come in with this impression there's going to be loads of noise in their house. You instantly close the window right in front of them and there's no sound. There's no noise anymore. And yeah. they go, wow, that's that's perfect for me. I've seen well, somebody. Go, I've seen somebody go to the extent as well as actually putting right next to a really busy road to put double glazing inside the double glazing. And it really? worked. Aye. I've, we've um we've sold two properties recently um on South Road in Cooper, which is probably um well it's the main road into Cooper coming from the Leven Pilesi side. Yeah. Um, but going back to the window situation, they both had new double glazing 
and yeah. not not yeah. once was the road noise an issue. Yeah, and and they've got big back gardens as well, and you're really never yeah. near the road. So I mean, most of your leisure and activity time will be out in your back garden. So it's never exactly. even anything really to worry about. And uh, and then uh, and then at the back of that, they've even got you know they've got one of them's got a field, isn't it? And the other one, the yeah. other side, got um, all the other houses. But but it's all nice and quiet and secure and safe. Um, mm -hmm. So that's probably another bonus about that. Okay. So first off, as I said, never estimate the power of, of nature. A nice airflow throughout your home could actually make a fundamental difference. Uh, something more amaratic. Um, try a couple of well-placed reed diffusers, as we said. Remember, keep them the, the sealed if, they, if you've got pets. Scented candles, like that's what you said, Anne-Marie. Scented candles are a good thing. Go for high-quality natural fragrances that don't go overboard. Too many of them can be overwhelming and even raise suspicion. You know, so buy one or two and gauge the effects of the room. You can always add more later if you really, really need to. I mean, flavor some aromas, flavor some aromas if you really want to do it for kitchens and stuff like that. Our coffee and nutmeg and our foodie favorites for kitchens, calming lavender or vanilla create smoothing moods for bedrooms and crisp scents like lemongrass or ginger keep bathrooms feeling fresh in the process. So different smells for different rooms is 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 quite a good one as well, you know. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think you need to. I think you need to. Um, with your agent, you need to discuss what, who your target market is in terms of who is the market you're going to be. Who's your main market going to be, or likely who's going to likely be most to pay their premium for your property? And sometimes you can move the sen move the senses or the smells yeah. to suit yeah. that suit that market so what's the most important thing to be aware of to be to just to be aware of curries garlic <laughs> yeah. fish oh fish when we cook fish in the houses oh my goodness you could smell it from the front drive it's like oh geez it's like no don't no please don't fish not definitely not and right. and possibly over over boiling broccoli and cabbage it goes right through at your house it's pungent save cooking those meals for another time where it's outside the viewings maybe a saturday night to give your air and their home a chance to clear for the next day possibly but but you know if you love curries garlic and fish or other pungent foods please keep that to a minimum remember it's only a short period of time even take the opportunity to go out if you're desperately and you need to have that that fix Take the opportunity to go to go out and have it at a restaurant for a change. You know, I remember just, we, this is a, I mean, well, this is a golden opportunity to actually take your take your partner out or take your friends out or go out for a meal. Yeah. You know, especially now lockdowns kind of lifted and we can go to restaurants now. You were yeah. going to say to me. I remember we had a property in St Andrews, um, Law Mill Gardens. I think it was a couple of years ago now. Andrea, when she was doing the creative content, was um, she even the, they had a curry. And she she struggles with with spice and stuff like that. Yeah, she does. It must have been a hot one. It must have been a hot one because she was even struggling to be even in the house. And, and, and so, it was yeah. like, that was me. I was thinking I'd buy it, if, especially if you make me one of these curries. <laughs> <laughs> On one off occasions, I've actually come out of some houses and actually the the the, the, the it's clung to me. Yeah. And in terms of the the smell, it's been that pungent. It's actually clung. And 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 the people in there, you know, God bless them. Um, they don't realise, and, no. and it, it takes a strong agent to actually turn round to someone and actually say, "Look, you need to sort the situation." And they're going, "What?" Because they've come become what they call when the adverts nose blind. Nose blind. Uh, yeah, and it's like uh, it's amazing how they've embla embedded that phrase into our mind now. Eh? That's <laughs> yeah. the power of advertising, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. It's like that was never a phrase until they started doing that. Exactly, because I knew what you could say. <laughs> yeah, the breeze, nose blind. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it so you can't actually it's it's having an agent which are actually prepared to tell you that i mean you know this classic example i often I often say to people this is an example of this i mean there was a, an agent in kirkcaldy and it was up strathallen road and they'd had the market they'd had the house on the market for two years and they couldn't sell it and they, they came to me as a result of that and they said jim we don't know what's happening we don't know what's going on, but our house is the selling. It's in one of the most popular areas in Kirkcaldy. Everybody wants to live here. What's going on? As soon as I walked in the door and I came to see them, I sat them down and I got I gave it to them. I gave them the truth. I says, you want me to sugarcoat it or do you want me to go around the houses and give you it the nice way? 
And they went, no, just give it to my big style, says dog. Smell it as soon as I come in the door. It's, it's on the walls, it's on the curtains, it's on the fabric, it's on the floors, it's on everything. You, I could, it'll put everybody off. I says, it, has the agent actually from before told you this? I felt like it was one of these Phil Spencer moments. You know, when you're called in to say, how's my house no selling? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, and it's like, how's your house no selling? It's the, it's the smell. It's the dog smell. And, and, and they went, right, we'll trust you. We're putting it on. We've changed agents. We're coming on with you. Um, weekend purge, completely painted the place top to bottom, scrubbed everything, washed all the blinds, the curtains and everything like that. I had it sold within a week. There you go. More than the arson price. Job done. <laughs> Just call me the fixer. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's out there and they're struggling and you just think wait a minute i'm getting told the market's really boring and everybody's selling all the time it's like what's going on then just give us a message and we'll sort it out for you <laughs> so the first time i've done that <laughs> Tullock gardens took off another agent after no even getting a viewing for three months and in five days gone there you go um yeah. wouldn't tell them the truth they wouldn't tell them what they needed to do. They were too yeah. scared. Oh, I might lose the listing. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, geez. It, you're, you're there as an agent to tell people and give them the best advice. Yeah. If they don't want to listen to your advice, the last thing you want to do is them come back and say, why did you not tell me? It's like, oh, I was too scared to in case, in case you took it somewhere else. It's like, no, our job is there to help you on that journey to get your house sold and get the best price. And we we need to tell you this. It's it's a kind of tough love thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, you know, we're, exactly. we're going to tell you. We you know we may offend you, um, and we'll try and do it as nice as possible. But the reality is, you've called us in to do a job, and we're no there just to mess about and just uh, and and get a property on and hope for the best that will sell to someone. It's like no, we'll tell you how to get the best value and the best price at the end result. You know, that's what that's what our job is, and that's what our that's what our uniqueness is, and what we do. I feel like I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you selling your house, Jimmy? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about um let's talk about before bedtime. Okay. So evenings are really your best friend when it comes to tidying up. Uh, as, as well as 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 shaving valuable minutes and fuss off your morning routine. Performing a reset for tomorrow brings a natural end to the day itself. You'll probably even sleep better knowing how well you've got everything handled in that process. You know, imagine imagine getting everything sorted out and then going to your bed and waking up. I mean, you wouldn't have anything preying on your mind then. You wouldn't be worrying about you've got to get up early and do it all before you go to work. Um, and that's all the things you can do. So the top tips here are put the living room back together by plumping up cushions creating uh, neating throws, you know, so just giving them a, just taking them off and putting them back on, returning books and magazines and paperwork to where they actually belong. Do the washing up, put it away, or get everything into the dishwasher and set for the morning. Check bins and empty them if necessary. Wipe down the hobs, the worktops, the, cu the cupboard fronts, uh, remove any cooking and prepare and, pre and prep and, and spills, get any toys into crates, um, even hide them away under the bed, in the cupboard, at the top of the wardrobe, put them into a corner to keep the floor and keep the floor space clear, drop clothes into the laundry basket, not on the floor, men out there. <laughs> it's often men, isn't it? Let's put yeah. it up. Yeah, so, yes. yeah. We'll just we'll just agree to that right straight away. So don't drop your crows on the floor, put them in the laundry basket or hang them inside the wardrobe. Uh, any other top tips on before bedtime? What could you what could you do before you go to your bed so you're prepped in the morning and you don't need to worry about it? Anne Marie. Um well just exactly what you've said, just make sure everything is in its place. You don't have to worry about um, you know, getting up extra early to do anything. But the key is everything in its place. There's nothing mm. more you can do. You know, you, you, that, that, that's just the, that's the key. Everything in its place. Everything's in, in order. You wake up in the morning. Obviously, you still need to have your breakfast and things before you go to work. But yeah. at least it's minimal. You don't have to worry about your current breakfast stuff with yesterday's dinner dishes. It's just, just what you're, you know, just your breakfast stuff. Anything you use for that morning, you know, put them away. Wash them up. Put them away. And it's just simple. And you Jimmy. feel better. 
I think you just need to. I think you just need to be disciplined with yourself. Just knowing that the, the time that the extra, the extra half an hour that you have in the in the in the evening, getting it, getting your house ready for the morning is going to actually save you a lot of time in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. So. My best advice, and I've been caught out with it before, um, the quick way to do this, because I've turned up to a viewing, I've, I've arrived at the door, and the seller's gone, oh, I forgot all about it, and the place is a mess. And it's like, I'll tell you what, within about five minutes, it's amazing what you can achieve. Tell you what, just get all your plates and chuck them in the dishwasher, or chuck them into this, chuck them into this, this container, and we'll just put them in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and get all your laundry chuck it in the basket get this and get that and get this and sort that and we'll sort the bed and the bed's no made just organize the 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 the, the duvet and just get that sorted out and put that over it plump up the pillows everything like that so basically what we're going to talk about in a minute is the 10 minute tidy and that's that's exactly what we what we did in the process we just that 10 minute tidy but I think as well, going back to the before bedtime thing, it's just the, the preparation to make sure the next day, especially if you've got a viewing the next day, that preparation to make sure that you didn't put too much pressure on yourself in the morning. Because if you have got kids, I mean, you're, you're, they're unpredictable. They don't, they don't get up and go, yes, mummy, what should I do next? <laughs> <laughs> and it's go, go over there and sit nicely and have your breakfast and don't make a sound and don't make any noise. No, that doesn't happen, does it? It's chaos, <laughs> Jimmy. You'll vouch for that. You probably hear it in the background right now. <laughs> <laughs> chaos, isn't it? Uh, Charlotte, that sounds like she's struggling downstairs right now while I'm doing this. <laughs> so, so, and 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 that means you want me to keep you up here for another hour so you can get a, <laughs> so you can get what an easy gig. You could, just, you could just tell her what you, you, what you could do. Didn't it? Hopefully, she's no watching. What you can do is you could stay up here for about an hour and a half and just say, to her, "Oh, the show ran on for a while," <laughs> <laughs> or Jim was talking to me about something, and I just had to. I had to spend a wee bit more time on it. <laughs> I'm gonna edit. Well, I can't edit that bit out because it's live. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean it's 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 the it's the before bedtime thing. Get everything sorted out. Um, worst case scenario, then let's look at this this look, option next. Mm -hmm. This is the ten minute tidy. Um, with everything else in place, the final finishing touches are all that's left in the morning. Do a quick sweep with a speedy checklist, and it's easy and on time to start your day in the process. Okay. So let's look at doors and windows. What's your best advice, Jimmy, on what you should be doing with doors and windows? Doors and windows, well, simply make sure they're clean. Um, as you said, with replacing them if they need to before windows, but I think essentially you need to make sure clean with doors, rub and polish like door handles, etc., because you don't want grubby hand marks all over them. And if it's a front door, I would always like a nice welcoming doormat because yeah. that's like home or something or something on there that's welcome and then they think wow but you gotta get them you gotta try and hit them in the heart to make them feel like that's going to be their next yeah. home so i think for the front door a nice door mat polish the handle polish the, the door knobs or handles and make sure the windows are clean just a quick check isn't it i mean you don't need to go around and polish everything if it looks fine just don't touch it yeah no, exactly. that's it um what about you Anne marie doors and windows Doors and windows, well, especially now with the, the sun out, you know, the type of time of year we're in, the sun shows everything. So as Jimmy said, just make sure it's all clean and polished, you know, especially at this time of year, because it does create an impression. You, you'd be surprised. Houses are lovely, but they'll pick up on that something was dusty or it needed a clean. You'd be surprised the sort of feedback we get sometimes. So just make sure everything's clean. Yeah, you could leave the internal doors open for air circulation as well. Yeah. And, and, and actually gives a sense of flow in the whole process. Um, probably open the curtains and blinds for the maximum amount of light. It's amazing the amount of times that we'll walk into a house to do a viewing and every single curtain's closed or, you know, in certain rooms or you've got blinds shut as well. And it's like, and it's like, and even, even the Venetian blinds or the vertical blinds, they're slightly shut. And it's like you're no maximizing the amount of light, natural light that's coming into a room. 
Um, and often I'll, I'll actually go around and open every single curtain and every single yeah. line um, before I start. So it, it's key as well to do the viewing um, before you start is actually to go around. We, I mean, we do it anyway, don't we? We turn yeah, up in advance. We just go around. Every single light goes on, regardless what time of day it is. Every single light goes on. And the reason for that is because you never know when you walk into a room if the, if the sun's going to disappear around behind a cloud. And then all of a sudden the room goes completely dark. So the good top tip for me, if you've got lights in your, well, you have got lights in your, if you've got lights in your house, <laughs> it's like, no, I, I use torch and candle. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got lights in your house, uh, clearly you will have lights in your house, unless you're an outer Hebrides. <laughs> <laughs> you might you might have just discovered electricity. <laughs> Sorry to the people in outer Hebrides. <laughs> um, but often people down south actually think that. Um, so um, probably open the curtains and blinds for maximum light, um, as well as if you have an opportunity, I have all got white light. Um, and in other words, daylight bulbs in my house. So you can put white light and daylight bulbs is actually, you put the light on and it, and it, and it actually mimics the sunlight to a degree. It's, it's natural, clear light, if that makes sense. It doesn't have that yellow tinge, which affects all the colors in the room. Um, yeah. Now, sometimes you want that if you want a room to feel warm, but sometimes you don't if you want a, a room to feel bright and light and actually and actually take advantage of the natural colours. I mean, if you've gone to all that expense to, to paint your house and to, to give it all the, that wonderful look, the last thing you want to do is put a yellow filter on it. Yeah. Um, so that's probably my advice about doors and windows and, and the most important things you can do for that. Um, so when we come to the kitchen, top tips for kitchen, Anne-Marie? Make sure there's no, nothing on display. That shouldn't be um, dishes. Make sure everything's clean, worktops. Um, minimal, minimal, maybe just a, a kettle. The toaster can actually be put in a cupboard, you know, minimal, and it makes it look bigger as well, you know, especially for the galley kitchens. Um, I'll just keep everything to a, a, a minimum. That's my tip for a kitchen. Some toasters look absolutely fantastic, though. You get some retro stuff. Depends style. on the toaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends on the too. toaster. Yeah. And, you think, and I've often said, people say, well, put that toaster away. No, leave it out. It actually looks <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It, it, it gives the, it gives, sometimes it gives the whole kitchen that feel of uh, country life. Or yeah. or retro style, um, yeah. just by just by some of the major appliances they've got there. So I actually say no, no, leave them out. You know, Jimmy, what's your thoughts on kitchens? I think you have to try and maximise your workspace um, because a lot of people homes right now, the the kitchen is basically the heart of the home, mm. um, especially with the modern day living right now and family sort of leading like kitchen and leading off into the pack garden and it's like hosting and running in and out the, the family house so make sure you have as much work top space as clear as possible and i think it's just the basic stuff again it, it sounds like i'm being repetitive but just clean and clean and tidy basically repetition is a lot of all skill yeah that's really what it comes down to so, so absolutely. I mean, the good thing is we, we all agree. Um, for me, it's ergonomics when you look at a kitchen. It's the the not it's it's, uh, it's it's laying it out in the natural flow, but somewhere where you can prepare your food, somewhere where you can cook your food, somewhere where you can uh, plate up your food as well. You know. I know we're no Michelin star restaurants when I talk about plating up your food. I've, I've, I've had people, I've had people go around the house and say, right, if I'm if I'm if the sinks there, I'm going to be doing this there, I'm going to be doing that there, and doing that there. But I've not got enough room to there. What about if I move this there? And they're just like going around yeah. piecing it all together for for them, trying to make it work for them. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a process I think in my mind before I start the journey, before I take somebody round to let them understand about the options they have in a kitchen and how that could be laid out in a different way. I mean, somebody might put their fridge freezer in a certain position. It's like, well, you can actually move that over to there or you can take that ladder cupboard away because it's not a it's not a supporting wall and you could put it in there. You could even take the ladder cupboard away and you could have, actually have a breakfasting table there now. Um, so I, I actually discussed that with someone yesterday in St. Monet. You know, so... So these are all these are all options that we can allow allow and paint a picture for someone to see in a kitchen. Um, I mean, the most important things are really and the key things for quickly for a ready reckoner is breakfast plates, 
coffee cups pans in the dishwasher are rinsed and put away uh, rinse them before you put in the dishwasher because i tell you what if somebody opens a dishwasher and says oh there's a dishwasher and it's like waft a biff in the chops <laughs> It's like, and you, and you think, oh, not because that smells lingering all around the room for ages. And it's like, why on earth did I open that dishwasher? <laughs> so it is something that we do check um, before we actually do it, just to make sure. So if you are putting your plates in the dishwasher, rinse all your plates quickly before you put them in. I know it's like, I keep saying to, to Elaine, it's like, wait a minute. So we're washing the plates to put in the dishwasher that's going to wash the, yeah. dish, the plates itself. That doesn't make sense. That's doing it twice. But but it is really, it's the, waft of, it's the waft of the smell that you get if you've had your stuff. So if you've had your stuff in the dishwasher for quite a while, please put it on cycle and clean everything now. Um, so that smell doesn't, doesn't waft around. If your dishwasher's got a funny smell, then you need to get a cleaner. Just stick it in, give it a rinse, and uh, and it'll be fine. So when we open the dishwasher, and because some, somebody will do, and say, "Oh, what type of dishwasher is that?" Yeah, and, it's yeah. like, and it's like, oh, and it's like you didn't see Bosch anymore. You see Beth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that was good, actually. Yeah. So I like that one. Yeah. That was on the yeah, spot of the yeah, moment. Hey, I'm here all week. Try the fish. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, uh, and wipe down worktops and the sink as well. I, a top tip for sink, um, if, you've got a, if you've got a stainless steel sink, um, you'd be amazed uh, if you've got all these wee scratches and that, how, how just bleaching it. Bleach your sink with it's stainless steel sink, bleach it. If you've got stainless steel appliances, guess what? Baby oil and um, uh, paper yeah, towel. Baby oil and small, paper yeah. towel are a top tip to take all these wee staining and marks at your stainless steel appliances and make them look really beautiful, like they've almost come out the packaging. So a bit, of, a tiny bit of baby oil. It's a cleaner strip, a cleaner uh, trick. Uh, baby oil on on uh, um, uh, towels uh, and just wipe it down, and it looks absolutely immaculate. So that's another wee top tip for your kitchen for the stainless steel appliances. Um, so we'll come on to bedrooms. You know, what's your top tips for bedrooms, Anne-Marie? Make sure the bed's made. <laughs> um, yep. Plumped up pillows, maybe a throw. Um, dress your bed, because that's the first thing that they're going to see when they walk into the room, if it's furnished. The bed, dress the bed, um, and just make sure everything's off the floors um, and in cupboards. And just, again, minimal, you know? Nothing hanging around. That shouldn't be. You know, if you've got a dressing table... Um, Make sure that there's what what's what's on the dressing table surface should be what's on the dressing table surface. Nothing random, you know. Yeah. Perfumes maybe, you know. Just keep it nice and minimal how a bedroom's supposed to look. But the bed, the the thing for me is the bed. The bed has to be dressed nicely. Yeah, and as as, as Andrea often laughs about, uh, put your toys away. We <laughs> 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 yes. still didn't get that joke. You're still waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, what about Anywho. you, top tips for bedrooms? Um, I would say, similar to Anne-Marie, I think, um, especially in the master bedrooms these days, um, people always do want big double rooms so they can have, like, a, a dressing bit, etc. So I'd say just make sure your clothes and it are packed away and not just left on on top of units, etc. So just making it as, as clear as possible, basically, just showing the the size and the depth of the room. Yeah, and, and probably my ones are make your bed and plump the pillows. That's classic, you know, all the time. Um, don't put too many pillows on the bed. You know, it's it's amazing I've come into bedrooms and they've had 10 pillows on them. Yeah, I know, I hate that. <laughs> I hate like, that. <laughs> well, it's it's a matter of taste and the object, the object of the exercise is, is to make sure that you don't put a viewer off because it's the first thing they focus on then. It's like they come yeah. in and go, who puts 10, 10 pillows in their bed? And it's like, yeah. well, you, you've taken your mind completely off. And then you have to then take them back to the original focus of the journey you're taking them on to get an offer out of them at the end. Yeah. That's the reality. Because yeah. let's think, be honest, let's be honest, the whole point in the viewing is actually to begin the journey at the door and actually lead somebody down the path so you've got the offer at the end um, or, or you're getting an offer at the end. That's the whole point of doing a viewing. There's right. no other reason for that. Yeah. yeah. I think the 10 pillows one that can um, make the bed and the room look a lot smaller, actually. Yeah. Because um, that's that, be then that becomes the vocal point of the room. 
close the wardrobe doors uh, and the drawers. I mean, that's another big thing as well. If you've got any drawers that are a bit loose or shaky or anything like that, please sort them, then close them. Because it just gives the impression if you've got a rickety sideboard or something like that, uh, that it's the typical thing about somebody thinks, well, what, is, what else is like that? You know, yeah. it's that sort of DIY thing. Oh, no, this is all box stuff um, all around us. So they then start to look for everything that's been done with DIY um, about finishings and, and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah. uh, and then the challenge as well, you get some viewers that are actually, they're joiners or decorators, and then they start criticizing, oh, like that. I wouldn't have done that wallpaper yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I get that like, all the time. Yeah. Uh, you're here to see the house. Yeah. <laughs> you're not yeah, here to exactly. see the wallpaper. <laughs> Exactly. And, uh, and put away jewellery and accessories. That's another thing as well. Uh, just for a point, uh, so people can see where all their stuff will go. And uh, and probably my top tip for that is make sure you put your pants in the laundry basket. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing the amount of times I've actually walked into a property and I think, oh, no, you're joking. <laughs> Slightly like out with a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the laundry basket? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's kind of my thoughts on uh, bedrooms. So uh, finally, bathrooms. Bathrooms, top tips for bathrooms, guys. I would say make sure it smells nice, it's clean. Um, no one wants to see toothbrushes, toothpaste. You know, again, anything that shouldn't be lying around, put it away. You know, get it away. Even if you don't have cupboards in your bathroom, just for yep. the viewing, put them in your bedroom, in, the, in one of your drawers in the bedroom. You know, mm -hmm. just keep it minimal, clean. You know, there's there's um, sprays that you can get to get rid of, um, you know, mold and things Lime like that. Scale and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. yes. Keep it all nice and you know, and maybe put a smell in there, or maybe a candle or a diffuser or something. Give it that nice smell. Yeah, that Jimmy. Thing, yeah. I would say if you're going to have, obviously, when you're in the morning, if you shower in the mornings or stuff like that, just give your give your wet wool or your tiles a quick rub down or your screen or etc. So just a quick rub down. Make sure yeah. the window is just slightly open so you get some fresh air and not that steamy sort of yeah. damp smell sometimes just my big, you know, one, that day. my big one for me is um the the lime scale on shower screens um now top tip to get rid of that is you take the wee uh, nylon pads um you can go over them but what to do is before you put the nylon pad put um uh, washing up liquid on it so washing up liquid on the pad and then you can scrub it all off it won't mark your your uh, shower screen you can often put washing up liquid as well and put it on and then you can take a wee stanley blade and actually scrape it all off quite easily if it's on if it, not if it's on a plastic you need to be skilled at doing that um i if it's on a if it's on a glass one it's quite easy to do on a wee stanley blade just to scrape all that off and there's nothing worse than it just gives a bad impression moldy seals around the baths as well pick it out and put new seal around um, and finally, the grout, mouldy grout as well, just blitz it with bleach, and, and it'll, it'll it'll whiten it all up again, and it'll make it look perfect again. So just that resounding, even the smell of bleach when you walk into a bathroom, bleach the bleach the plug hole, bleach the the downpipe hole, the overflow, and bleach the toilet as well. Just the smell of bleach when somebody walks into a bathroom makes a fundamental difference in their mind. It's like yeah. this is clean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a wee cleaner's tip, we used to just spray Jeff or something down the down the plug hole and then walk out the room because there was nothing wrong with it. It's yeah. like, you know, they'll not come back and haunt me for that. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, you didn't clean that bathroom. <laughs> it's like, no, if, yeah, if, if it was fine, if it was fine, a, a contract cleaner, if it's fine, you just look around, you go, right, spray the toilet, spray the pl sink plug, and then that's us away. That's that room done. There's nothing needing done to it. But you walk into the room and you instantly, you instantly feel fresh when you walk in. So that's the wee cleaner's tip for that. Toothbrace, uh, toothbrushes, um, lying about, kind of tidy them away. Um, polish, uh, posh products on display. Bayless, uh, Bayless and Harding, uh, yeah. you know, soaps like that. Um, you know, all these things that make people think, oh, wow, this is luxury. Um, and towels on hooks and folded towels. New towels if you can. You get fluffy, plump towels. It all looks the part. Not, no colours that are glaringly obvious. Um, but towels that are nice and fluffy and plump, it just gives that nice warm feel to the whole bathroom. Um, and that's us, guys. You know, that's it. Um, wow. We're done. Um, and loose seats, keep the loose seat down. That's probably one I talked at. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Final words. We've got 30 seconds. Anne Marie. Right. Okay. Just make sure that your house is ready for viewings. The 10 minute tidy up. Make sure you do yeah. everything the night Perfect. before, you know. 
Just Jimmy. be prepared. Just um, clean, tidy, and declutter as much as you can. Um, yeah. Could be perfect. And that's it. Pounds, oh, sorry. I mean, we've got a link to this uh, this whole show and the blog, a four minute uh, a four minute blog. You could read that yourself. And that's us until next week, guys. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you've got any Cheers, questions, guys. feel free to message us direct. And we'll see you next week for next week's Five Property Show. Bye bye for now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your day.